barbaric scene yesterday outside of the Israeli embassy right here in Washington, D.C. A, uh, a man who, it is now confirmed, was an active duty member of the Air Force, stepped outside in front of the, uh, on camera, recorded all of this on his own phone, and stepped outside in front of the Israeli embassy, poured some sort of flammable liquid all over himself, and then self-immolated, lit himself on fire. Uh, take a listen. I've got some audio for you here. This is uh, this is the man walking over as he's about to do this, uh, and he starts chanting, Free Palestine. Take a listen. I am an active duty member of the United States Air Force, and I will no longer be complicit in genocide. I'm about to engage in an extreme act of protest but compared to what people have been experiencing in Palestine at the hands of their colonizers, it's not extreme at all. This is what our ruling class has decided will be normal. He sounds remarkably calm. I mean, it's got to be some sort of mental illness that would lead to this. And then he tilts the camera phone up against some sort of uh, prop. He props it up somehow, faces it at himself as he lights himself on fire. Now, there's somebody sees what he's doing, goes, sir, can I help you, sir? What are you doing, sir? And then... He engulfs himself in flames. Free Palestine! Hey! Hey! Free Palestine! Free Palestine! Free Palestine! Free Palestine! Free Palestine! Man's on fire! Man's on fire! Ah! Ah! Yeah, I, I'll spare you the rest, but he, he fully engulfed himself in flames, yelling Free Palestine over and over and over again. The man, 25-year-old Aaron Bushnell of San Antonio, thinking he was going to start some sort of Arab Spring in the United States, something like that. For more on this, I want to bring in Kurt Schlichter. He's a town hall senior columnist, retired infantry army colonel, and the author of the book, We'll Be Back, The Fall and Rise of America. Kurt, good to have you back with us, sir. Thank you. Well, great to be back. And let, let me let me start from the beginning. I have nothing but contempt for this uh, disgusting, treacherous narcissist. He is a bad person. He's an idiot. Uh, he's a moral illiterate. This is a guy who uh, was supporting his country's enemies. Those bastards that he's burning himself over murdered uh, dozens of Americans. They're holding Americans hostage. As a uniformed member of the United States military, this guy broke multiple laws and his oath. And this idiot uh, caused irreparable damages to his his family. And, the, you know, unbelievably, there are people out there who probably loved him. Their lives are now ruined because of this narcissist, idiotic stunt. He is a disgrace. He should be mocked. We should uh, 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 belittle and make fun of him. Because, you know why, Vince? Because I want other weak-minded individuals, and it's always the weak-minded ones who get to be the suicide bomber or the guy who lights himself on fire or whatever. It's never the cadres. It's always the morons. Uh, maybe some other moron will say, oh, I'm not going to be treated like a hero. They're going to be making weekend at Bernie's jokes about me. I better not set myself on fire. You know, Lloyd Austin, the secretary of defense, who is constantly uh, like shrouded in secrecy. We don't know anything about his activities, including Austin. when he's hospitalized. Lloyd Austin combed the entire military in search of extremism. Apparently, Kurt Schlichter, he missed this guy. Oh, yeah. I mean, like... Uh, uh, was this a surprise? Was this a, you know, was this idiot uh, piping up about our oh, stop genocide in Gaza? Yes. Well, you know, that's exactly what we're trying to do. Sadly, it's the Gazans who want to commit genocide. Um, yeah, uh, I, 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 I'd be very interested to see if his chain of command was aware that this uh, mental defective uh, and moral illiterate was. Uh, uh, you know, sending off signals about what he intended to do. Well, look, look um, just to give you a sense of who he is, I mean, uh, National Review had a piece up pretty quickly yesterday afternoon digging through his Internet presence. Uh, his LinkedIn profile demonstrates that he listed his pronouns as he, him, as if it was a mystery. Uh, on his Facebook page, he liked groups that included the Burning River Anarchist Collective, as well as Students for Justice in Palestine, Kent State University. Uh, he also yeah, posted things— get- he also posted things. What would I do if I was alive during slavery or the Jim Crow South or apartheid? What would I do if my country was committing genocide? The answer is you're doing it right now, he claimed. Uh, so there, so we've got all sorts of red flags popping up all over this guy. Well, I mean, he was doing what leftists like. He was, he, 
you know, all his ideas, and I use the air quotes because they're not really ideas, they're just mindless hack cliches, um, are accepted and embraced by the same people who are pulling the strings of the desiccated, moronic, half-wit pervert who's masquerading as our president right now. I mean, this idiot's politics are the politics of our White House right now, and therefore not just accepted in the military, but actively embraced. Yeah, there's a there's a, meanwhile, you, you did say, uh, you know, you, you talk about this guy and the impact he's having. I do see some people, members of the left today think that this was wonderful that he set himself on fire. Uh, I did see one social media <laughs> conversation uh, saying that he should, quote, rest in power. And then another lefty attacked that person saying you're not allowed to say that that's only reserved for black people. So the left is having a normal day today. Well, he's black now. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny I did see some, one himself. of the follow up. One of the follow up quotes was actually, "Would you accept Black End?" Uh, look, I, and, and, and I know I got. I, I was saying things along these lines on Twitter. Uh, yeah, huffing them. How dare you? This is a horrible tragedy. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to present more. And one of the ways you do it is by telling the truth. Yes. The guy's an idiot. He's a narcissist uh, and an arsonist. Uh, he's a moral illiterate, and uh, he should be mocked. And I, I and I, I I and frankly, the pain his parents and those who oh. loved him are feeling oh, is not God. going to be increased uh, because some random guy on Twitter told the truth. Yeah. This guy has ruined his family. He's disgraced his uniform. Uh, and I, watch what watch how there's a general officer at his funeral. Just watch it. Watch it happen. Well, what is? I mean, as, I don't know. If, has the White House said anything about this today? It's like you know, normally you would think uh, you got a, a active duty U.S. military service member just set himself on fire in front of the Israeli embassy. There's a massive there diplomatic questions involved, U.S. military questions involved. You think the White House would have something to say? It looks like this is one of those things they're just going to ignore. Oh, I'm I'm I'm, I'm sure if asked that uh, um, moronic half wit. Uh, wait, I got to be more specific. Uh, Claudia Jean Pierre, whatever her name is, uh, I, I, I'm sure she'll say something stupid about it. Well, this is a terrible tragedy. It's not a tragedy. It yeah. was a deliberate choice by a traitor to the United States who embraced our enemies, who violated his oath and the law, and who harmed the people around him because of his narcissism. It's not a tragedy. Okay, this is just somebody cleaning out the gene pool. It's amazing. It's just amazing. All right, let me let me shift gears uh, to a very different topic with you, um, because I, I know you've been very focused on uh, what's going on at the RNC because you'd like to see you know the country improved. Ronna McDaniel, uh, who runs the RNC right now, has announced that she will resign as the chairwoman of the Republican National Committee, uh, effective March eighth. That would be just before Super Tuesday. She said in a statement today that I have decided to step aside at our spring training on, at, on March 8th in Houston to allow our nominee to select a chair of their choosing. She says the RNC has historically undergone did. change once we it's have a nominee, so and it has always been my intention to honor that tradition. Your reaction? He chose her. I was there. I watched his chief of staff lobbying for Rona McDaniel. Look, I like Trump. I want Trump to win. But Trump needs to hear the truth, which is you screwed up by appointing this moron who has failed in every election cycle since she got the job. Was it like six or seven? I mean, she fails and fails and fails, and yet he, he backed her. And, and maybe in that way he will learn and not fail again. Uh, the RNC is a total disaster. You and I had a chance to talk a little at CPAC about the uh, – the, the lawfare component, how we're going to fight for election security, uh, you know, in the courts. And they're absolutely not ready. They're just not ready. After I talked to you, I went, I did a little research trying to, trying to see, track, track this down. Is there someone in charge? Since there's no one in charge and it's all her fault. I'm getting, so I'm, the next guy better yeah. figure it out. I'll get to uh, yeah, and, and just on that issue, I've been obsessing over this because you know I think normal yeah. normal people obsess over this, which is how ready is the Republican Party for all of the legal issues going into the election? And I talked to you about this uh, on uh, th on Thursday or Friday when we spoke, and this this is a big deal. And I'm I, I am digging and finding out more information. Hopefully, we have some positive answers in the weeks ahead. But uh, working on that. Meanwhile, uh, yeah, this there aren't any happy answers. I, I I hope there I hope there are some something uh, out there. But again, we'll dig. So. 
Uh, Donald Trump has endorsed a man by the name, I think the last name is pronounced Watley, Michael Watley, uh, chairman of the North Carolina Republican Party, to succeed Ronna McDaniel. And as you point out, D Donald Trump chose Ronna McDaniel to begin with. Well, she used to be called Ronna Romney McDaniel until everybody dropped Romney collectively. Um, so <laughs> so what is uh, what's the deal here? Do you do you have a sense of this, Michael Watley? Uh, or, and of course, I imagine either way you are concerned about what the future of the RNC looks like. Well, I, I, I hear he's an attorney, but simply look, we're not even to the attorney part. We're to the operational part. Who is in command? Right. Who is you know who is the staff? Where is the support staff? You know, when somebody goes, well, we've got fifteen lawyers on this. I don't care about the lawyers. I want to know about the paralegals. Yeah. I want to know if they have the staff to do the things they need to do. It's like saying, well, I've got seven colonels on it. Great. you got seven guys to sit around and drink coffee. Who are the people who are going to do the actual work? Right. That's what I want to know. What's the organization? What's the plan? How is it integrated? Who, who, who are, you know, how, how are the uh, various state operations connected? Because the states are all different, but they've got some uh, overlap. And they have to be able to, uh, you know, shift focus well, from one state to another when things get hot, and it, it, it's terrible. And one we thing, and one thing, the RNC, the one thing the RNC clearly needs to recognize is that there is a like there is a problem with the enthusiasm of their own base that that is entirely predicated on a, assuming failure on the part of their leaders. So if you can demonstrate that you're doing something and actually show people results and give them routine updates on a daily basis as to what you're actually doing for them, then people feel better about grabbing an oar and rowing in the same direction, don't they? Vince, you are so right. One, look, if Rana wasn't a complete idiot, okay, she's, she's a very, very stupid person and a bad leader. Uh, if she wasn't a, such an idiot... You know, what? The, it, if it was Kurt Schlichter in charge, every Monday I'd come out and I'd say, here is what we're doing. Here is the organizations we've set up. And I'd like to invite a few people from, uh, you know, Daily Caller, from Town Hall, from Fox News to come in and take a look at our organization to report to you people so you know when you write a check to yeah. us, it's not going, you know, to pump out, you know, to puff up my lips or to get some flowers or for my limo or dry cleaning you're getting a legal team in Wisconsin that's going to make sure they can't rip well, us off again. And there's a life lesson built into this too, which is like, and you know this as a military leader, it's like if if the people who work for you aren't telling you about what's going on, chances are they're not actually doing anything. Like if you're not getting any well, updates, absolutely. if you're not getting any updates, chances are nothing's happening and, and nobody's taking responsibility. <laughs> Yeah, Rona McDaniel is always more comfortable sucking up to stupid donors. And as you know, because you've been involved in Republican politics for uh, a long time, there's literally nothing stupider than a uh, major Republican donor. These are the dumbest people <laughs> on earth. Okay, I mean, they, they, they are literally human rocks. I, I don't understand how they got rich in the first place. Um, and her whole thing was sucking up to them and not doing the hands-on hard work that she needed to be doing. What, what the hell was Rona McDaniel doing on, uh, uh, you know, Fox talking about policy? I don't want to hear what she thinks of, you know, trans things or the border. I want to know what she's doing to create an infrastructure that's going to, oh, I don't know, chase ballots in Michigan. Uh, it, it's all the, the stuff that needs done is the boring stuff, the hard stuff, the stuff that takes brains and smarts for which he is uniquely unqualified to do. All right, Kurt Schlichter, we'll leave it there because we're up against the clock, but I hope you keep insulting them into excellence. I really appreciate your time, sir. I, I, I will mock them into conformity. Mock them into success. All right, that's Kurt Schlichter. Thank you, sir. Good, good to talk to you as always.